morning. Welcome to worship. Wherever you are, whether you're sitting in your living room, your kitchen, you're sitting on your couch, you are on your bed, we at Bethel welcome you. So before we start, let's take a deep breath to invite the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that connects us um, with one another to be. The spirit within us that allows us to see one another as human beings, regardless of our flaws and perfection and the messy people we are. Let's take a deep breath to invite the Holy Spirit that gives us life. The life when it's taken away from one effect, all of us. We are here to receive Christ. We are called to proclaim Christ. We are sent to show Christ. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, one God, the fountain of living water, the walk who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is in your bulletin, page five, Listen, God is Calling. The 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, your general city waters the world with goodness and you cover creation with abundance, awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our summer music is um, given to us by Hotland Harvest. His eye is on the sparrow. Thank you. 
All right, we have many people we need to pray for, so let's get started. God, thank you so much for, the, for this day. Thanks for those who are worshiping with us today, um, members and non-members, and we're so thankful that there's a way that we can worship together, even though we can't physically be in the same place. We have many friends and family who need your healing touch. We ask for Star, Renee, Bob, Neil and Linda, Al, Michaela, Sadie, Sophia, Gabe, Ken, Virginia, Don, Art, Eileen, Ken, Jackie, Cecilia, Martha, Richard and Vicki, Tina and Marty, Ethel, Liam, Doris, Megan, Whitney, Myrtle, Maria, Paul, Karen, Don, Tyler, Doris, Eloise, Charles, Steve, Tom, Carol, Chris, Ellen, Jill, and Dolly. Bless them all, Father. You know what they need more than we do. Um, for some, they need healing. Some need comfort. Bless them. Bless their caregivers. Um, help them to uh, get what they need to be happy and healthy and the people that you have called them to be. This time in COVID-19, Father, there are so many people who have been affected by it. We ask that you send hope, comfort, help, and healing to those who have been affected, those who have been affected by uh, their, their jobs, being unable to work, or who have come down with the illness, or just have to stay away from the people that, that they want to be with. We ask that you bless all of them, especially those the most vulnerable, the elderly, medical care providers, and anyone who works in a hospital for that matter, and our siblings from a uh, community of color. We ask that you bless medical personnel and first responders, those in the military who protect us, keep us safe, bless them, and keep them well and, and protected in their jobs. We ask that there can be an end to violence in our society, an end to suspicion and hatred, and that your peace can envelop us. We can see each other through your eyes and see each other as you see us. I ask that you bless students and teachers returning to school in some form or another soon. Give wisdom and guidance to the districts to return at the right time and uh, help the parents who need to work but need to make sure their kids are being taught that they can all work together and have the best experience possible for, for teachers and for students and families, and we can all work together to get through this. We ask that you bless the work of the Fresno Rescue Mission. They help so many people. Bless the people who work there. Bless the people who go there for help. Bless those who donate. Help them all work together to, to better people in general. I ask that you bless our seminary graduate, Sarah Gorman, who's waiting for a call. Bless her as you are preparing her for the church you have set aside for her, and bless that church that you are preparing, that they will be ready for her and that they will all be ready at the same time. I ask that you bless Elizabeth Eaton, presiding bishop of the ELCA. I bless Mark Colmarud, um, bishop of the Sarah Pacific Synod and the Synod staff. Please bless Bethel Lutheran Church, bless Pastor Mitch, the church council, church staff members, and all who come and who uh, have worshiped at Bethel Lutheran Church, that you will bless us all. Thank you for all things and for being here with us. In Jesus' name, amen. The first lesson is from the 32nd chapter of Genesis, beginning with the 22nd verse. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his 11 children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? 
and there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Our psalm for today is Psalm 145. The cantor will sing the even number, and the congregation will sing the odd number. The second lesson is from Paul's letter to the Romans, the ninth chapter, beginning with the first verse. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Here ends the second lesson. <laughs> The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, 
We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. This is the word of the Lord. Our sermon hymn is on your bulletin, page 8. What wondrous love is this? Grace and peace to you from God, our Savior and Lord. A man one evening visiting his compadre's house. So a compadre is a traditional term of reverence and friendship for a man. In Spanish, it means co-father, that is, a child's father and godfather are to each other compadres. As the two compadres are having a conversation, one compadre says to the other, compadre, I don't understand. It's been 12 moons since you and I both slaughtered a cow. I sold till the my, like you did. I put it in the barrel in the attic, like you did. I am on my third cow, and now you are telling me you still have meat left from that first cow? How is that? 
And the, the other compadre look at the other one in the eyes and say, answers, yes, compadre, you are right. It's been 12 moons since you and I slaughtered and salted a cow. But the difference between the two of us is, after I salted mine, I shared with my neighbors, and when they slaughtered theirs, they shared with me. So I am still eating the meat of that cow a year later. So this story is one of my childhood that I, list, that I heard a lot in my, when I was the little girl. But it takes a community. The role of Jesus as a teacher in Matthew 13 shifts to Jesus' role as a miracle worker in chapter 14. As described earlier in the gospel, Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. As a result of Jesus' ministry, large crowds follow him. Jesus once again leaves the crowd and takes refuge in a boat, and once again, the crowds follow him. One of Jesus' most reconnaissance miracles is found in this text, but it occurs only after he spends time healing the sick people. As the day grows long, the disciples come to Jesus with a reasonable concern. It's time to close up shop for the day so people can go buy their dinner before the food vendors shut down for the night. And Jesus said to them, they need not to go away. You give them something to eat. Give them something to eat? How, Lord? This is a story that brings awareness to our faith, a faith that surpasses all our understanding. The God of the Exodus, who divided waters and provided manna for heaven, is at work in history again. The disciples look around them at the little, little bit of food they have, which wouldn't even feed half of the disciples let alone this huge crowd of people. All they see is the scarcity. All they see is what they don't have. The disciples only see the huge gap between the vast need at hand and the limitations of their own resources. We have nothing but a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish. The disciples' request is not malicious. They simply are aware of their location, a deserted place, and the time. The day has turned into evening. In this time of uncertainty, we may perhaps identify with the disciples. We see what we don't have or what we could not do. Don't get me wrong, many people have lost their jobs in the COVID-19 pandemic. Income is not what it has, it has been. Health insurance is lost for some. Especially in California, we are back to staying home again. We cannot hang out with families as we used to. Churches continue to remain closed. We miss gathering with our friends and neighbors. Jesus seems perplexed by the disciples' request to send the people away. Why would they leave when the disciples had food? And he said to them, bring them to me. He doesn't argue with the disciples, and he doesn't argue with us. He simply invites them and us to bring everything to him and surrender it all into his hands. We feel empty now, but we know what happened next. 
Jesus made more than enough out of what seemed like nothing. He did not call down bread from heaven like manna in the wilderness. He made more out of what was already available. Jesus knows the lives of those in the crowd matter to him, so they needed to be fed even when the disciples think otherwise. He fed more than 5,000 people with the little that he had, and there were leftovers. Now, did you notice how the actions of taking, blessing, breaking, and giving a lot like what Jesus did in the upper room on the last night he was with his disciples? Those actions, actions are the ones we repeat every time we come to Christ's table. On the second Sunday of every month, starting next Sunday, you are all invited to partake with us in Christ's table. Before worship starts, set the table with your favorite plate and cup. Set out a small portion of bread and your favorite juice or wine. Make sure there is enough for everyone in your household who will part participate. It's good to share the sacrament with others in person when at all possible. If you have only one of the elements, that's fine. Because you know what? Our Lutheran Church teaches that the full benefit of Christ's presence is received through each element. So my friends, I invite you to bring yourself to Jesus. Bring all of yourself to Jesus, whatever little you think you have. Let him take you and break you and bless you and give you away. And watch as everyone has enough. Everyone is satisfied. Everyone is fed out of Christ's abundance, and there is plenty. The God of the Exodus, who divided waters and provided manna from heaven, is at work here and now. Amen. Let us together profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered into one wherever you are, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is on page nine in your bulletin, O Lord, hear my prayer. So for that song, I invite you to close your eyes and then listen to the song. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.